About one in three people who starts having seizures is going to find it difficult to get them to stop with medication. We know this, we've known this for a hundred years. And for over a hundred years, we've known that there are other ways to stop seizures than medications. Uh, the first surgery to stop epilepsy occurred in the mid 1800s. And since then, we've refined that technique and it's a very successful technique. It involves pinpointing the spot where the seizures come from and verifying that that spot is the only spot producing the seizures and that the patient can live without it. Now, I know that sounds really bizarre. There are parts of my brain that I can live without and I always get really upset when I hear people say, oh, well, you know, you only use 20% of your brain and Einstein was really bright or really intelligent because he used more. And We use all of our brain. But one of the things that our brain is endowed with is redundancy. More, one area uh, is not the only area doing something. So there could be three or four areas carrying out the same process and they, may, they work together. But that means that oftentimes we can remove one area with no reduction in function for the patient. So the first thing we have to do is verify that the seizures come from one spot. That we do when we put people in the hospital and record their seizures on the video with the EEG running. And that's how we find that they have the one spot. There are a couple of tests that we do uh, that will then verify that it's safe to remove that spot. Uh, there will be times when that testing tells us that we have to actually do something even more elaborate. And yes, occasionally uh, patients are awake during their surgeries and we actually map their functions um, during the course of the surgery. Um, we, of course, leave the parts that work behind and take away the epilepsy parts. Um, good parts stay, bad parts go, I know. It's kind of amazing uh, that they pay me to actually just figure out good parts, bad parts, but there it is. And, and patients actually do extraordinarily well. Our patient outcomes show a very small number of people having a decline in any kind of function uh, and that the group as a whole sees little to no change. Uh, so it's, it's in, that's the important thing, you know, um, family members will say, oh, brain surgery means you're going to be a vegetable afterwards. No, no, that just isn't the case. It does not happen. Um, we have complications, but they're 1%, 2% at the most. And um, the outcomes, uh, which have been proven actually in randomized trials, which means they took 50 people and just treated them with medicines for a year and they did took 50 people and did surgery, at the end of a year, 70% of the people with surgery are free of seizures, 5% of the people with medicines are free of seizures. Both of them have had significant injuries because of course seizures continue to be dangerous and people were injured, hip fractures, skull fractures uh, occur, and then surgery group has complications. But in this study, there was one death, and it was in the medicine-treated group from uh, a condition known as sudden unexplained death in epilepsy and related to having continued seizures. So it's really important to recognize that there are basic standards that have been set up 20 years ago that recommend surgery over additional medicine trials in individuals who have proven to be resistant to medications. And right now we believe that that is two medication trials without success. Makes it likely someone will not have future success with medications. And so this becomes the burden. How long do we wait before we actually fix somebody? Because while we wait, their lives are being affected job performance, school performance, all of them are declining and their emotional well-being is declining, their, their position in their family is declining. And, you know, people need to recognize the seriousness of this, plus the seizures are getting stronger and the brain is losing its function because the seizures are taking over that area. 
So the progressive memory loss with ongoing seizures makes a surgical intervention very, very reasonable. And surprisingly, it's used at a rate of probably one in 100 people who could actually benefit from it. Vastly underused. And when we actually look long term at the people who have had the surgery, uh, the mortality rate in people who have, um, and the life expectancy in people who didn't have the surgery is five years shorter. This is not a, this is not a, a new thing, this is not, but it's vastly underutilized, vastly underutilized.